Janet's bank account growing and J doing QT had caused a decline in liquidity. Hello, everyone. Raul Pal shares his latest analysis amid the Bitcoin's volatility, crash, and market turmoil. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. As I've always said, is crypto markets are volatile by nature. It's a 70% volatility asset class. It has deep drawdowns and it has tremendous upside. In fact, it's the best performing asset class in all recorded history. But with that best performance comes volatility. It's something I warn about in this don't fuck this up thesis, which is don't take leverage. Don't try and trade around or FOMO into stuff. Just be careful what you do and stick to the basics, stick to the bigger tokens. If you're going to degen into stuff, do it in the smaller stuff because that stuff's much more volatile. Your probability of getting it wrong is very high, although you can get 100x in the space as well. I understand that's attractive to many people. But I'm trying to keep everybody on the straight and narrow. And when you see these drawdowns, it always feels terrible. And I've been doing this since 2013, and they always never feel great. But the reality is, it's normal. So it's normal in the fact that in the last 12 months, you've probably forgotten this, but this is our fifth or sixth 20% pullback in Bitcoin. So you've dealt with this many times before. You just kind of forget it which is weird. And I think Coinbase put out a super interesting tweet, which was, there have been five Bitcoin bull markets. In an average bull market, you will have to survive the following to ride it to the top. Six, five to 10% drawdowns, three, 10 to 20% drawdowns, two, 20 to 30%, one, 30 to 40, one, 40 to 70. And that's all during a bull market. So it takes a certain kind of gumption. It takes an ability to turn off Twitter, to turn off your screens and say, has my thesis changed? Is the adoption of this technology stopping? Is there any other reason that it's going to slow down? Where are we in the business cycle? I spend enormous amounts of time trying to educate, educate you guys that this is a macro asset and it's driven by the business cycle. It just happens to be forward-looking like technology stocks and it's driven by the liquidity cycle. So has something changed in the business cycle that would tell us that we're going to have a failed crypto cycle? Well, in all probability, that's a no. So therefore, it's corrective price action. And if you happen to have extra money on the sidelines, use these corrections to add. That's what I did. I was lucky enough to have a bit of cash, um, and I added to my Solana position. Great. Uh, and I found that that compounds really well over time. It's a key way to make better returns out of this space is use the drawdowns to your advantage. Even the big cyclical ones, I didn't sell out of anything last time. I had no intention of it. It wasn't like I missed the top or anything else. I knew that to get back in is really hard. If you take X sum out, you never put X sum back in again. You go smaller because you don't want to risk it all. Your whole psychology is screwed up. So what I prefer to do is say, well, this is a longer term trade. When we get the big drawdowns, I just want to add and then you compound and you're back to all-time highs well before the market is. And that is really, really a superpower. So what's going on now? Why is crypto so shaky? It's the same reason tech's been shaky. It's liquidity stupid. Remember, I've told everything about this everything code cycle. And those of you in Real Vision Pro um, Macro, and even Pro Crypto, Kevin Kelly and myself talked about it yesterday in Pro Crypto, liquidity is the big driver of all asset classes, and particularly crypto. It's the most receptive to liquidity injections or withdrawals. So I correctly managed to time the bottom in 2022 based around the liquidity cycle. And the forward-looking elements of the liquidity cycle continue well into 2025. So I don't have anything to concern over. So therefore, we're looking at the wiggles in liquidity. And those of you who follow Mike Howell, who's on Real Vision frequently, he also follows liquidity. He's probably the expert on liquidity. And he talks about the liquidity air pocket that I've looked at as well. 
the liquidity air pocket was happening. If you think about the US liquidity, it's driven by the Fed's balance sheet, which they've been doing QT. So they've been tightening it, making liquidity less available. But that's been offset by the, by the treasury, no, by the draining of the reverse repo. The reverse repo is an offset to what the QT was doing. And in the meantime, the other part of the equation is the treasury general account, which is the checkbook of the US government that Janet Yellick controls. And she's been building that. But these have meant the liquidity based back in 2022, and it's been going vaguely higher. The everything code cycle taught you that there is no way of financing the debts. It's now become a, uh, a word people use, fiscal dominance. This is the everything code cycle I started talking two years about. The everything code cycle says, well, if GDP growth is too slow, then the amount of debt in the system um, is too high. So you need either interest rates to come down or you need growth to go up. Now, growth is driven by demographics over time. There's not much we can do about that. You get cyclical growth, but you don't get the overall trend rate growth, which has been slowing. So the available GDP has to pay the interest on the debt between the government sector that's 100% of GDP and debt and the private sector is 120% in debt. So we've got not enough GDP to cover the interest payments. This gets really exacerbated when interest payments are high. Trend rate of GDP growth is about 1.75%, call it 2%. Uh, whilst um, interest payments right now are, let's say, two-year bonds are 5%. Okay, and if you double that, taking into account the private sector, you've got 10% of interest payments and a nominal GDP growing at whatever it is, five. So there's not enough GDP, which is why the bond market's been freaking out. Um, over time, yields have, have risen, even though the Fed have been talking about cutting rates. And this is the issue of not having enough GDP growth. This is the everything code cycle. So what it leads to is what's known as more cowbell, which is stimulus. Stimulus can come in a number of ways. So the most obvious way is reducing interest rates themselves. That has been a typical path. The other way is the backdoor mechanism of injecting liquidity into the system. Quantitative easing is the best known one. The other one is draining the reverse repo and also draining the Treasury general account. China's also got the same problem. It's starved of dollars. Um, it has a bunch of dollar debts. It has a debt deflation going on, particularly in the property sector. Um, it's an unbalanced economy. They need dollars, and they can see Japan losing control of its currency. They're nervous about that. Janet Yellen's been over there twice because she's worried that if China devalues, they're going to dump deflationary goods onto the US and create other problems. So somewhere here... There needs to be an injection of dollar liquidity into the system, whether that's via swap lines or some other backdoor mechanism to alleviate the strength of the dollar. I think that's going to come as well. Um, so that's, and China itself will probably inject liquidity into its system in some way, shape or form. Everyone's been asking them to do so. They will have to do something over time, but they can't ha do it with the US interest rate so high because if not, the currency goes. So it's this problem. There's a bit of negotiation. We've got a G7 meeting uh, coming up in um, May. So um, we may see some noise around um, um, foreign exchange markets and some change there. So look for a change of sentiment coming out of that. Look for a change of sentiment coming out of the bond market. Jay was very cautious not to say we're going to be raising rates. He really, really wants to cut rates because they know they have to to finance the deficits. That air pocket of... Janet's bank account growing and Jay doing QT had caused a decline in liquidity. That decline in liquidity is what caused the decline in crypto. Now, Jay went clearly today to say they want to reverse some of that and Janet's going to start reversing some of that and then she'll start spending it. So the forward-looking basis, liquidity is going to come back. Is it going to be this month or next month? I don't bloody know. It doesn't really matter because we're not in it for the short-term trade. What we know is it has to come back because of the everything code and the financing of it. If you've not seen what the everything code is, then please go through uh, the YouTube channel or on the Real Vision platform and look for the everything code, that big interview I did with Nathaniel Whittemore. I also lay it out in my um, end of 2023 address 
uh, there. Also, the crypto address that's on uh, that was uh, last month. It's all there. So please go through, take some notes, have a look at that. On the Real Vision platform, you can take these amazing notes. You can share them. The community can see them. So make sure you have a look at those as well. Start thinking this thing through. Start preparing for where this is. The next phase usually happens around this halving period. The next phase is when the banana zone happens. That's when everything starts accelerating. So often we have a slower drag up and then we start going. That's what I think happens. That's the altcoin season. That's when things start to get really bananas. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I'll keep you posted as that starts playing out. But right now, we should be looking for low in markets as liquidity is signaled to improve and liquidity will start to improve. Um, and then as we go from that, we can look at, okay, how long does this cycle last for? But the back end of this year, it's all going to be about bribing election, making sure you can pay the deficits. And that's pretty much everywhere. Everyone's got to pay the same bills, which is the cost of their government debt. And there's only one way around, and that's more cowbell. Anyway, nothing to worry about. Pretty ordinary markets. Um, it's just something you have to get used to in crypto. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Raul Pal. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.